Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli and today I'm going to take you through the all new 2023 Airstream Caravel 20FB. This trailer has, in my opinion, the best kitchen and bathroom layout for all the small trailers. Now the Caravel is a series of trailers that comes in multiple floor plans. There's a 16RB, which is a rear bedroom. There's a 19CB, which is a rear corner bedroom. And there's also a 22FB, which is a front bedroom. This trailer has a 21 feet length. That's from ball to bumper. And it also is eight feet wide, giving you an interior width of seven feet, seven inches. The exterior height from the ground to the top of the air conditioning is nine feet, seven, giving you interior headroom from floor to ceiling of six feet, seven inches. Gross vehicle weight rating of this trailer is 5,000 pounds, a dry weight of 4,300 pounds before factory options, and a hitch weight of 565 pounds. The net cargo carrying capacity before options is 700 pounds. We're gonna start on the exterior first. We'll do a quick walk around and then we'll jump on the inside so we can check out the floor plan and the layout. The exterior is all made out of aluminum. You got aluminum sheets, stretch form panels here, all buck riveted in place. You got a belt line protection in the middle where the two seams overlap. You got a rub rail protection where the side sheet meets the underbelly. It also has heated tanks and enclosed underbelly on this trailer. So there's insulation underneath there. It's all wrapped up in aluminum. The tanks are in a little aluminum box that has heat that goes down into it. Gives you a little threshold protection if you're gonna do some cold weather camping. It has a Zip D manual awning on this and we have lots of videos on our YouTube channel of service tech tips on how to operate this awning. So make sure you subscribe and check those out. LED marker lights down the side, stainless steel wrap protectors on the front protect this body from getting dinged up as you're towing. It also has solar stone guards that protect the glass. These are bottom ones are hingeable, so you could swing them out and clean leaves and debris out from behind them. Just take these little caps off. And it's more resilient than the aluminum body behind it. It's also gapped to allow some type of deflection so it doesn't dent your body if you hit something. These are also removable. You take a lift up this panel here, take a screwdriver, turn a quarter turn. These swing out and lift off so you can clean your glass. Up top, this has the optional 200 watt solar charging system. There's two max air fans in the ceiling. There's a bathroom fan. So you got a lot of stuff going on, on the roof and Airstream utilizes as much space that was left over to offer optional solar. Uh, also, there is a toolie step. You could operate it by foot, push in and out. It's really high quality aluminum. It's got grip on the tread so you don't slip out. Uh, but make sure you put that in before you tow. Aluminum threshold and door frame, all buck riveted in place. You got grip tape on the bottom so you don't slip out. This is vinyl flooring throughout. You got composite flooring underneath. And uh, they even give you this so you could sweep the trailer out because there's a large lip here that prevents any water from getting in. Grab handle to get in the door. You got a gutter rail over the entry door. Down here, you got an LED step light. Screen door detaches from the main door. It's all TIG welded, you got screen door guards, stainless steel hinges, six rivets on each hinge. This slides across to fill the gap. Undo the screen door, snap it up to the main door. The main door actually clamps in place so it doesn't blow around on a windy day. The door is also insulated, it's got thick weather seal. It's a double lock system, you got a big deadbolt, you got an entry door handle, you can lock it from the inside on both of them but very secure, even has a window in the entry door, beautiful hinges here for the entry door and that awesome sound when you slam these things shut. All right, coming around, we got uh, 15 inch rims and tires. These are uh, trailer tires, 225, 75R15, load range E. So they're rated up to 85 PSI and 85 miles an hour. You also have never lube hubs. You have shocks on each wheel, never adjust braking system. It's a rubber torsion axle. And uh, there's some differences. There is a Bambi series of trailers that is the same four plans. They have a 16, 19, 20, and 22. The Caravel is their upgraded model. It has almost 100 extra features and amenities over to Bambi, and there is a considerable difference in price and a weight difference as well. Two porthole windows this is where the kitchen is in the trail. I can't wait to show you guys inside. Just hang around a little bit. I gotta show you some stuff on the outside first. 
Caravelle medallion, it's not like a decal. This is an aluminum medallion. You have an outside GFCI protected electrical outlet that will work when you're plugged into shore power like we are here in the showroom. You have an 18,000 BTU propane gas uh, furnace on board. Below, you got stabilizer jacks, all four corners of the trailer. Now, they're not meant to level the trailer. You crank these down, there's a tool that comes with it, and that will help stabilize the trailer so it doesn't bounce around when you walk around side. There's also a spare tire that we'll see up front. There's jack locations underneath each one of the Airstream travel trailers. It tells you where to put the jack. A little sticker and a metal plate. You're gonna use the bottle jack for your tow vehicle to jack up a portion of the trailer. Over here in the back, we have double tail lights. You'll notice the difference. If you just look at the outside of a Bambi versus a Caravel, you'll see one tail light versus two tail lights. You'll see a back bumper and back bumper stores that the Caravel has. You don't see that on the Bambi. Beautiful aluminum bumper. They make these at Airstream. They got a bumper lid here for additional storage in the trunk. It's got a mat. Now this is wet storage, so you don't want to put things in here that you don't want to get wet. If you have things that you want to keep out of the weather, there is a lockable rear trunk here. This is insulated. It's weather sealed, double sealed. You got a lot of room in this trunk. You can see now all the cabinetry is plywood with laminate. No particle board, no chipboard, no melamine. No masonite, it's all plywood with laminate, very stable, and they laminate both sides. It's not a sticker, it's gonna peel off. So they do a great job, and it's very serviceable. Everything's accessible. 23 gallon freshwater tank, if you wanna fill that tank, just take the cap off, stick the hose in. There's a relief valve here, lets the air out of the tank. Underneath the trailer is gonna be low point train, but this is also lockable. License plate bracket here, another one of those cool medallions. A rear window that opens all the way out, even has insect screen. Every window that opens has screens. This has the optional window awning package. You get these beautiful zip D awnings. It's an acrylic material, just like the main awning, but these help shade the side and back of the trailer. But this is the little tether, you pull it down, these swing all the way around. And this rolls up, it's all spring loaded. And check this out, it's metal guard. So when it's in, it's protected, it's out of the element. If you scuff up against something, you're not gonna rip your material. If you compare that to a lot of other travel trailers, they just use a vinyl awning and it's exposed. And when you pull it out, water drips all over you. It's all mildewy smelling, not with these awnings. You got some Airstream lettering there, you got roof clearance lights, and you have a wireless backup camera. We call it a driving camera, because that stays on the whole entire time while you're driving. It comes with a monitor, you put it in your tow vehicle, plug it into your 12 volt socket, turn on your parking lights or headlights, that powers up the camera, allows you to have a vision of what's going on behind you as you're towing down the highway. Also best practice to have your parking lights or headlights on in your tow vehicle whenever you are towing a trailer. It's the most mindful thing to do. Over here, we got another stabilizer jack point here in the corner. You got cable and satellite connections. If you have a good campground, you can hook up to your cable and satellite service. Now those tanks, you got 30 gallon gray waste tank. What is gray waste? That is sink and shower. Well, there's a waste hose cap here. This comes off. There's a waste hose storage tube all the way up front. Colonial Airstream gives you a lot of cool stuff when you buy a trailer from us. We give an RV starter kit that we put together ourselves. It gives you a quality waste hose. You slide that out of the tube, snap that on, and it's always best practice to empty your black waste tank first, which is 18 gallons, and again, heated. Pull that handle out, waste comes discharged through your hose. When that's done, close the handle, open up your gray waste, sink and shower waste, usually sudsy water, cleans out your waste hose. Pull these handles straight out. You have a light so you can see what you're doing at night here. And then it also has a black tank flush. So after you empty the tank, the black tank, and you're gonna put it away and put it in storage, you wanna get some of that residual waste out of the tank, take a regular garden hose, take this cap off, stick it in, turn the water on, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, wherever it takes, just make sure this handle's all the way open when you turn on the water, because there's a wand and a jet inside the tank that sprays the walls down. The last thing you want to do is build up pressure in that tank, and you definitely don't want to overflow it, because it's going to flood out the inside of your trailer. We do get a lot of tech support calls on that, so make sure you don't mess them up. They are labeled, so it's pretty easy to do so. So the, you have the 30 gallon fresh, I'm sorry, 23 gallon freshwater tank on board, but if you want to just 
supply water to the trailer with the campgrounds water pressure and you don't want to use your water pump and you don't want to fill your tank, we give you a fresh water hose that screws right on. This has a water pressure regulator built into it. It supplies water from the campgrounds water pressure directly to all your plumbing and bypasses the tank. Outside utility shower with hot and cold water, you got a 30 amp smart plug. I talk about these all the time, but you just push these in and pull out and now unplugs it. Very easy. It's not one of those twist lock that no one ever twists or locks and that causes problems. Below the trailer here, we have the, the freshwater tank. There is a low point drain here on the side if you want to drain it down. There's also other low point drains for winterization and we show you where those are during our orientation. Now that's something that we do here that's fantastic. Anybody that buys an Airstream from our dealership, we have a scheduled date and time where they come in, we give them training inside and out, it's all set up. You got water in there, you got your fridge on. We teach how everything works inside now, and, and then you're welcome to spend the evening at our dealership after your training, so you can try everything out before you hit the road and head back home. Over here is uh, the side window awning. Now it comes with the tool and a stick to operate it. I could reach it by hand. That's a travel latch. But once you get set up at the campground, you just pull that out there. Now this shades the whole entire side of that trailer. Really keeps the temperature down inside and allows you a light rain. Now, not heavy rain, you put all your awnings away. If it's too windy or too rainy, but light rain, you can have this window open. You won't get any water on your dinette. 13,500 P2 air conditioning is standard, it has electric heat pump on board. The reason why this trailer has more ceiling headroom than a Bambi is because it's a ducted air conditioning, so the air conditioning doesn't sit down inside the coach. So you get increased headroom if you go with a Caravel. It's quiet stream air conditioning, so it really is quiet compared to a central air conditioning unit. Uh, always check your tire pressure before you tow, lug nut torque, always check your lug nut torque. Don't forget it, I could, I've seen what happened when people don't. You have a drip tube for your air conditioning, so any condensation that builds up drips through the tube, not down the side of your trail, leaving stains and marks. This is a tankless water heater on board. This runs on propane. There's a control inside the bathroom. We give you a continuous flow of whatever temperature you set on the thermostat of hot water. It's excellent. We have a lot of glamper buyers now, people that love to take long showers and they're and their RVs, well, they really appreciate the tankless water heater because they don't run out of hot water. Because in a typical system, you have six or nine gallons usable, and people could run through that pretty quickly. Another stabilizer jack point here. There's also a VIN plate with tire information, tire pressure. Other side of the rock guard. You have two 20-pound propane bottles on board. It has a regulator that you could switch left to right bottle, but. Uh, Open up the cover, you can see your tanks, you can see the regulator, you can switch over left to right. And there's a little indicator there, it's red, just shows you that propane tanks are empty. We fill them for you. When you buy the trailer, when you come to pick it up, they're completely full. But whatever one it's pointed to is the bottle that you would have open and that you're using. And if you have both bottles on and one bottle gets empty, it will automatically switch over. This bottle cover is also removable, so you can take your propane bottles out and get them refilled, or exchange. These are exchangeable size, so you don't have to drive around looking for a place that fills propane tanks. You can just exchange it and keep going on. Two and five sixteenth inch ball up front. Again, 565 pound hitch weight capacity, so you always want to make sure not only what your tow vehicle's towing or maximum towing capacity is, which you want to make sure this is a 5,000 gross, gross vehicle weight ready. Make sure your vehicle could tow that or more. You also want to be mindful of your vehicle's hitch weight capacity. This is 565, so you don't want to exceed that. You also want to make sure and find out if your vehicle is compatible with a weight distribution hitch system or not. If it is, great, we'd love to put one on. If not, it says not to use one, do not use one. So you just tow it on the ball, which you cannot exceed your hitch weight rating. Then you want to also find out your vehicle's payload. A lot of newer vehicles have a payload or a cargo carrying capacity sticker in the driver's door. You look at that, you add the hitch weight, you add your cargo, your accessories on your show vehicle that you added after market, and your passengers. If you add them all together, it cannot exceed that payload sticker on your driver's door. So it's not just towing capacity. You've got three things to think about when looking at tow vehicles. A lot of midsize SUVs could pull this trailer. Full-size SUV, definitely. Midsize pickup trucks, most likely. Electric hitch jack is standard on a Caravel. Dealer installed option on a Bambi. You've got a seven-way wiring harness, you got your blinkers, brake lights, brake signal, charge lead, very important to make sure your vehicle not only has a seven-way, 
Make sure it has either a factory brake controller, it's pre-wired for a brake controller, then we could put a hardwired one here at the dealership, or is compatible with a wireless brake controller. You need to have these brakes on this trailer active. You're required to, you gotta make sure you're safe. So uh, we do brake controllers here in a lot of different tow vehicles, but you definitely wanna make sure you have the seven-way wiring harness, otherwise you gotta send it out and have the vehicle rewired. Um, also too, you got a trailer breakaway cable here. Uh, the trailer has a battery system that has to be active in order for the brakes to work when your tow vehicle and the tra uh, trailer are disconnected. In an emergency situation, if the trailer came detect uh, disconnected from your tow vehicle, it would pull this plunger out. It would actually activate the brakes in the trailer so your trailer could stop. Uh, if you pull this out and leave it out, it will rapidly drain your trailer batteries. This is not meant to ever come out, just for emergency purposes. Electric hitch jack has a light, has also up and down. It has a manual override. There's a little tool here that comes with the trailer. So uh, if you have battery failure or something, you can stick this in here and crank the trailer up and down by hand. You gotta take your bottle cover out, gets in the way. And there's a little level here, which is cute. I say that uh, because uh, it's not really practical, but the manufacturer of the hitch jack included a little bubble level that you could turn these screws and calibrate it, and you'll know you're close to level each time. Uh, the frame has heavy duty paint on it. It's uh, textured paint. Uh, you just wanna make sure you touch that out periodically. You got safety chains here that you wanna crisscross for your tow vehicle. Make sure they're not dragging on the ground. You got a propane quick disconnect port. So if you wanna do a low pressure grill, now just make sure whatever you're gonna hook into this, that it's compatible with low pressure, because that's all you're gonna get out of this port. There's a little collar that slides back, snap this in, turn the gas valve on down here, hook this up to your grill. It's only a few feet long, so you're not tempted to do anything silly like cook underneath your awning and start a fire. Uh, the battery the, the battery system of this trailer is up to the customer. So if you get the optional solar charging system, the panels are there, controller display, but there is no batteries. If you don't get the solar, there's also no batteries. So you have a choice of either lead acid, not too many people do that anymore. You could do AGM, which is a little bit older technology, but you could do 80 amp hours per battery, get 160 amp hours total, 80 usable. Or you could do two lithium 100 amp hour batteries. You know, I would recommend the ones with the heat. Then you have 200 amp hours total you, you could use of lithium batteries. And they work well in cold temperature and you wanna charge in cold temperature, that's what the heat is for. But they're in this battery compartment back here. Uh, Colonial Airstream puts a lock on these compartments. We also give you a hitch couple lock up front. The spare tires between the A-frame, you just take this pin out, slide this other one across, and uh, you get access to your tire. It's a full-size spare, steel wheel, different torque specifications, so make sure you check your owner's manual for that. And you also wanna check your tire pressure on your spare. What's the worst thing that can happen? You get a flat tire, pull out your spare, and that's flat too. Well, check that all the time. There's two tethers for your front solar stone guard. Lift these up, spin the neural knob, park it in place on both sides. Then you can lift your window up all the different heights, clean your glass. Make sure before you tow that you put these tethers back on so this thing doesn't flip up on you when you're driving. And then again, to the roof, if you look at the roof, there is a white coating on it. It's still aluminum, but it's got a coating on it that reflects the sunlight and also is a good adhesion for all the seals and gaskets and sealant that goes around all your protrusions through the roof. There's a lot going on up there. So now that you had the basic walk around the outside, now let's head inside. But before we do, here's the window sticker. So this shows you the base MSRP, which is $80,600. You have destination and fuel surcharge of $2,700. This has uh, an optional solar charging system, which is 200 watts of $2,100. A window awning package I highly recommend for $1,700. You do it aftermarket, it costs almost double that, so just do it as a factory option. And then it has a convection microwave upgrade of 475, giving you a total MSRP of 87,575. The convection microwave upgrades from the standard microwave that comes with this. In the inside, you got a fire extinguisher here by the door. You got some boot storage here. Kick off your shoes, put them in here. This is all cut out and trimmed nicely. You got a battery disconnect. You got your outside light. You also have your uh, awning. When the awning's out, there's a light underneath that. And you got your interior ceiling lights. And they're dimmable. You got a magazine rack over here, some code hooks, dry erase board. Pretty cool. Cramp handle to get out or in the trailer. 
Welcome to the space. Now let me talk a little bit about what this floor plan has. You got a center dinette area. You have a front bed that's 48 by 78. Dinette table folds into a bed that's 40 by 78. You got a rear huge corner kitchen and you got a rear corner bath. It's separate toilet, separate shower. Let's head up into the bedroom area to check out the 48 by 78 bed that you have on board. Premium mattress. Underneath the bed, there's a storage compartment. This opens up, comes with a whole different, bunch of different plastic bends. Now this bed, because it's wall to wall and there's a cabinet, it does not lift up. So you do have to reach in to get to it. You have another compartment here underneath the dinette. And then there's two different decors available. And the only difference between the decors of the Caravel is just the cushions. Everything else, floor, cabinets, bedspreads, all stays the same. There's tungsten, which is like a matte black, and there's pewter, uh, which is a, a different shade. So they're both beautiful. Uh, tungsten seems to be the most popular right now. There's a privacy curtain that separates the bedroom from the rest of the trail. You can pull that across on this track. You got overhead roof lockers in the bedroom. You also have two speakers here. There's two speakers in a living space and a subwoofer on board. You got full blackout curtains that go all the way around the front panoramic window. And also at the foot of the bed, there's a hamper that lifts up. You could put some pillows in there and just check out how deep they are. I mean, you could get this all the way down. And then at the head of the bed, you have a matching one, but you also have bedroom lights in here. You have an electrical outlet, which is powered off the standard 1000 watt inverter, and you have some USB charge ports as well. But you can pull these all the way around and black out the whole front of the trailer. You even have reading light at the head of the bed too. There's a wardrobe here, and it gives you ample room for storage, even a spot up top. Also has, there's QR codes all throughout this trailer. There are key areas that people might have support questions, so you could scan it with your cell phone. It'll bring you up to the support page for the Caravel on Airstream.com. Pretty cool stuff that Airstream does. There's a light in the wardrobe. You got drawers, which are all full extension. You got one here, you got one here. They really utilize every inch of these trailers. Up top, this one is equipped with the Max fan. It's got a motorized lid, thermostat control, rain sensor. Even has, uh, because it's close to the bedroom, you can pull the shade across and really darken it. And it has removable screens here, which you can clean, clean the blades periodically. Two huge windows over the dinette that open all the way out. This one has red handles. It just indicates that it's an emergency exit, so you could see it easily. If for some reason this door was blocked, this is the one you'd climb out of. And the screen is removable. You could pull that cord out, and remove the screen, and climb out of the trailer. And you also have ocean and roller shades. You could go half down. They're now called domatic, but they're the same materials. Pull it all the way down, give you full privacy. You got task lighting over the dinette, one or two elements. Above that, we have the JL audio stereo system, USB. We also have an uh, area here that if you wanted to get a Blu-ray player or PlayStation or something, HDMI allows you to hook in and go right to the TV. Even This is a marine stereo, so it has one of those like rubber covers. That wireless backup camera, this is the monitor for it, stores in this box here. That suction cups right to your windshield of your vehicle. Now the ducted air I talked about earlier, this is the ductwork. There's you know, four just in this regular area here. You could spin them around, change direction. You could shut some off and ac actually power more air conditioning in other parts of the trailer if you wanted to. Uh, but it's uh, great because it reduces noise level quite a bit. You have some intakes here with some filters you gotta clean periodically. Don't let them clog. It's gonna really work, make your air conditioning work hard and you know it's gonna really lessen the life of it. The dinette table folds down into bed, you know, just tuck your cushions back nice and tight on both sides. Look underneath, you see an electrical outlet underneath the dinette. Lift the table up, snap the leg in. It comes out of the cleats on the wall, swings down. Once you get it in there, take your back cushions out. And you got a really nice size bed here. Look, I could get all the way across. Time to get up, just jump out of bed. You can have your sheets and comforter and pillows. You could stuff them in the compartments underneath. But it's just as easy to put up. Put these backrests back in place. Swing the table up. Make sure it locks in both cleats. Fold the leg down. Boom. More storage here. In the hallway we have a 
propane leak and CO de detector here that's hardwired to the battery. You have your battery charger and converter, converts AC to DC, charges the batteries, has all your electrical breakers here, GFCI reset, and 12 volt fuses, and these are have indicators on it. If it fuse blue, it will actually indicate a red light. And this is lithium compatible, so you don't, if you decide to do lithium, there's no upgrades you need to do. Smoke detectors here in the ceiling, nine volt battery, you gotta change every six months. Thermostat control, this is for all your HVAC, for the 13,500 BTU air conditioning with heat pump, 18,000 BTU furnace, but you could turn it on from here. You could toggle through different modes. Cool, auto, heat pump, furnace, fan only, off. Cools air conditioning, auto is air conditioning or heat. Heat pump, furnace, fan. And then uh, you could also change the fan speed on the air conditioning furnace is one speed. You could set the clock. You could also set a program. You could change your temperature up and down from here. You could see your inside temp. And you also change from Fahrenheit to Celsius. More roof locker storage here. This one actually has the owner's manual bag in it. Give you a nice bag. Put all the manuals in there. Manual for the trailer, a newbie's guide to owning an Airstream, and a whole bunch of manuals for all the components that are installed in this trailer. Another Max Air fan. This one doesn't have the little cover on it uh, because it's in the kitchen area. Television is on a articulating arm so you can swing it around different positions and it locks in place when you're ready to tow. Another cool feature by the entry door is a large pantry area. Check out how deep this is. You can put all your canned goods in here, things that you need to just grab quickly from the outside. Check this out. Little bumper over the door so if you don't duck on the way out, you don't smash your head. Very mindful things you, you, they do. There's also an antenna booster on board. There's an antenna on the roof. It uses 12 volt to boost the signal for the TV and the stereo radio. So if that's not on, you don't have TV signal and you won't have stereo reception. And uh, there's also an inverter circuit here. Even though the TV is 12 volt, you might want to have some device here. So they give you an electrical out that runs off the inverter. Again, it's 1000 watt, so don't exceed that. 4.1 cubic foot refrigerator with freezer up top. A little magnet keeps that thing open. Pretty cool, right? And then you have removable, adjustable shelves, room on the door, little light. And this is a compressor style, so it uses 12 volt to run. Does not require propane, which is awesome because you leave this on the whole entire time you're towing. There's a little dial on the back that you set it. I usually set it in the middle and that's perfectly fine. There's vents up here that allows this cabinet to properly vent out. Welcome to the kitchen. Now this is one of the big things, like people that pick this floor plan really love to cook and they love that kitchen space that's separate from everything else. So three burner gas cooktop with removable grate so you could clean it easily. You just, you know, electronic ignition so you're not lighting it by hand. If you check out a Bambi, a Bambi will just have a smaller two burner, lower BTU, and will not have cooktop ventilation. So if you're really into cooking, Maybe the Caravel would be the best choice because it has more cooking surface and ventilation. You got an ocean air roller shade here in the kitchen, more task lighting. There's even metal underneath the cabinet because it's going to get hot here so you don't have any you know, chance of fire. Huge drawers in this to give you the Civil War organizer too, but look how wide these are. Another one here. Another one here. This one flips down, the wheel well is behind there. You got a furnace duct outlet here. You got the furnace here with the return. Another duct work over here. The optional convection microwave is great. Uh, if, if no one's used a convection microwave, it's just like using an electric oven in the house, except it's a little bit smaller and it has a convection fan in the back. Over here, we could turn on and off the pure sine wave inverter. You have your Victron MPT solar controller display. It'll tell you how much solar you're bringing into the trailer. We sell a lot of smart shunts at our dealership so you can monitor on your cell phone, not only what your battery capacity is, but we also sell smart dongles or smart solar controllers so you can see how much solar you're getting right on your phone locally inside the trailer. Sea level two tank monitoring system to monitor how much battery capacity you have, fresh water, zero percent. Now it's different. A lot of RVs, it's thirds, it's quarters. So you don't know, like you're at the teetering point of three quarter or full, you don't know that, that whole gap in the tank, what you have. This gives you levels based on percentage. It'll go one all the way to 100. So you really know and have a good idea what's in your tank. You can monitor gray, black, and you can turn on your water pump here. So it's a demand pump. You turn this on, 
pump then pressurizes the whole entire water system. The trailer, once it pressurizes, it automatically shuts down and it's ready to go. Once you turn on a faucet, it senses a drop in, in water pressure, the pump kicks on automatically. You never leave the pump on if there was no water in the trailer because it would burn itself out. And never leave the pump on when you're towing because just in case a faucet kicked on and your sink drain was shut, guess what's going to happen? It's going to overflow and flood out your trailer. You gotta, you gotta go through your, your pre-travel checklist. It's in the owner's manual, it's on the support page. There's a lot of things to think about and do before you just hook up and tow off. Cooktop, the ventilation, there's a little louver on the outside you have to open, there's a little, two little tabs. You got a light here as well. Another GFCI protected electrical outlet. In the back, you got a trash pail, lots of storage underneath the sink area. Premium hardware, these uh, hinges are all adjustable. They're removable too. And you got the J latches here to keep these doors shut. Check this out. This is a big sink. You could give a little like little dog a bath in this thing. It's so big. But uh, you got two sink covers here. Some people use them as cutting boards. That rear window opens all the way out. This even pulls out. It's a little sprayer. Nice faucet. They use really high quality stuff here. So it has a higher duty cycle. People's expectation when they buy an Airstream travel trailer is travel more extensively. It's not just a camping trailer that they buy to use one or two times a year for a couple weekends. People really engage with the lifestyle, invest a little bit more money and get an Airstream travel trailer to give them that level of expectation. Even these corners here, this is all solid oak where the plywood comes together. Uh, you see in the RV industry a lot of plastic transitions. That just doesn't work with an Airstream. The bathroom door slides this way. Instead of a handle that sticks out, you get stuck in when you walk down the hallway. It even has a gap in the top. The bathroom has its own fan, but if you want a really high powered fan, they leave this gap so you could use both of them. There's even ductwork for the HVAC in the bathroom, a little towel bar in the back of the door. You got a roller shade behind the porthole window, porcelain toilet. That box is the black tank. It's 18 gallons. Foot paddle, just push it all the way down. Gives you a flush, partially fills the bowl. Sink in the bathroom, another faucet, GFCI protected electrical outlet, bathroom light, water heater. Just set your temperature here. I'll say you want 110 degrees in the, in the shower, put it to 110. Just turn the shower on all the way and then you got your hot water. If you try mixing with too little bit too much cold water, you're not going to be able to fire up the water heater. It needs to see enough flow in order to turn the water heater on. So a little pro tip. You also have a towel rack here, medicine cabinet on the wall, and just say you get up in the morning to use the bathroom and you turn the lights too bright, you can actually dim one down and have one off. Rollaway shower door snaps in place. There's a squeegee built into it, squeegees it down when you're done so all the water rolls off and goes down the drain. In the shower, you got a really thick bottom and it gets a little bit thinner as you go up to ABS plastic because there's, it doesn't need to bear any weight, but you also want to keep the weight down inside the trailer. A little pocket here for shampoo, your diverter, the wand, really nice stuff they give you. Is uh, removable and you could, uh, there's a different flow patterns here. You also have a clothesline in the shower you can pull across. You can hang light things in here to let them dry out. And there's a removable seat here in the corner. So if you wanted more room and you didn't want to sit down, this just unpops. But I like it. You know, you can sit down here and just chill out and relax. And uh, this dumps right down into that gray waste tank. I believe this concludes the inside tour of the all new 2023 Airstream Caravel 20FB. This trailer is available at Colonial Airstream. You can visit us on our website at colonialairstream.com. Don't forget to check us out on social media. We have awesome short videos on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and even YouTube shorts. Our telephone number is 800-265-9019. And don't forget, I work here at Colonial Airstream. I also sell them. I love to work with you. We'll see you next time.